Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Thanks for watching. And guess what? Today's video is going to be on a 1970 Honda Trail 70. We're going to do the head and the jug, the piston, time and chain. I'm going to show you all that. We're going to show you how to take it off, the time and marks, all that good stuff. So, first, let's get this bike off the truck and we'll get started. We'll get right into this video, and you can't see me. Well, let's get into this video. First, gotta find the camera lady. She can do a lot of weaving. Look at that, looks nice. Oh, those weaving. But she forgot this. Why did she forget pulling these out? Ah. Well, I'll help her out. She's been working her butt off all day. Look at all these weeds. Man. We're going to take this exhaust off and I'm going to show you all this. Let's get this apart. I love using these tools so much quicker. Oh, by the way, I'm not wearing my Alice in Chains shirt today because I don't want to ruin it. You know, someone's going to, I'm going to wear, I'm working on a Honda. I got to wear a Honda shirt. So anyhow, first thing we're going to take off is I'm going to take off, if you have this on your bike, Ooh, that's a long screw. Look at there. This one. Oh, look at there. That one's a little bit. A little. There you go. I'll have to straighten that out a little bit. It's a little pushed in. It's harder to get off. Now, the next thing you want to do is these two bolts right here. Loosen up these two. There's one here and one on the underside. Let me get a light here somewhere. Here we go. Okay, that bolt right there. So you're gonna wanna loosen that one. And now let me get them loose and uh, I'll be back in just a second. Last nut, now. This is already broke up here, the rubber. This ain't the original exhaust, of course. It's a Honda, a Honda exhaust, but it's not off this kind of Honda. I think it's like an XR or something, 70. It actually says Honda right on it. But get it off. You might. Yep, this one I'm gonna have to. This, you're gonna wanna loosen this bar. Let's do this. Might find other ways around to doing it, but holy buckets of some long bolts in there. Now these are aftermarket, these ain't original. But see, now that's loose, kind of gets out of the way. Voila. Now, some of these exhaust, the original ones on the 1970s, this keeper on here, see how that's, you know, that all the way around? Now the original exhaust had two pieces, one slice and another slice, and you would have to put those pieces on and then, then put it on, which was kind of a pain in the butt. This was actually kind of nice, I like that. But um, I don't know if I have a keeper here I could show you. Now, I couldn't find a keeper right now. Um, I got them away somewhere in my mess. But 
if you take your bike apart, you'll know what I'm talking about. Because the older ones had that. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to go to the other side. I want to show you. Ow! Oh, man! <laughs> I keep hurting myself. It's just been one of those days where I keep hurting myself. Well, it's either either a whole bunch of DeWalt boxes fall on me, or I get stung by a bunch of bees. What else? Oh, yeah! And some guy got my finger caught in a, in a when we're picking something up, and my finger was caught in there, and I'm like, oh, let go, let go! Anyhow. Sorry. Raven rain in here. All right, so we're going to take this cover off next, and then this cover. So, me and my long screws here. That's why I like using this. Oh, and my other favorite tool. Let's see this is the tool. Got hopes to go the right way. All right, now, take that cover off. Screw. Oh, I guess I should show you. There's a screw here. Well, of course you got those two screws for the this cover. Ba -da -ba. Then you got a screw down here. Then to take this cover off, you got one screw here, and then you have a screw down under the shifter. A little tiny screw right here. So, this little. Now they're coming out easy. Now they don't always come out that easy. Voila. All right, so we have that off. What am I going to do next now? Hmm. Okay, now what we'll do, we'll take out the carburetor. Uh, we'll make sure that's off. What I'm going to do is pull these two bolts. I can get this carburetor out of the way. And then uh, I'm going to pull this cover off, and I want to show you the timing. You know, because a lot of you guys probably don't know the timing chain and how to set that. I'm going to show you that next after I pull the carburetor. Which two bolts? These two bolts right here. Huh. I'll, sh I'll take those two bolts off. I'll film that. And I'll show you how to lift the carburetor up. And then we'll get to this. Now, we'll take off the throttle. We'll pull that booger out. Get it out of the way. Well, another thing we're going to do here is we're going to take these bolts out. Just to loosen this up here. So that's nice and loose. Yeah. Now sometimes you can just... Nope. I don't want to strip the head on that. I could use a universal. Or, you know, you know I always find funny how... A 10 millimeter always disappears. I had my gear ratchet 10 millimeter. Guess what? Can't find it right now. It's hiding. The gnome took it. Oh, my hair. So, gonna use a wrench. I hate using wrenches, it takes so much longer. So, while I get this off, as I wrench this, I'll be back. Because I'm sure you don't want to watch me do this. <laughs> oh, and I got the angle of the camera's not even right. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do that, guys. I'm going to take these two bolts out. As soon as I get these out, I'll show you. Got the two bolts loose. Now, make sure your fuel's off. You got reserve on and off is up. Stop. Marked as S. Take your hose out. Holy buckets, look at that. Wow. Talk about brittle hose. All right. We're going to replace that bad boy. So, you can get this out of the way. What I like to do is I'm going to put this on the other side of the bike. Tie it up out of the way. And I'll show you that. Well, I didn't tie it out of the way. I just kind of stuck it here since the fuel's already drained out of the carburetor. I stuck it over on the side of the other way. Now, if you don't want to scrape the frame, you can stuff a rag behind it. Wrap a rag around it. If you got a really nice looking one, you don't want to scratch it. Just put a rag around it. Keep it from scratching the body on it. Or you could put a uh, wire or bungee cord. Put it up here. I'll connect up here. Hold it out of the way. This will be out of the way. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
course, take the spark plug wire off. Boing. Just like that. Now, let me uh, let me get this cover off. I'm going to show you. To get this cover off, what you're going to have to do is take the bolt off on the other side. Now, come to the other side of the bike. Follow me through my mess right here. You can probably remove this little cap, which that's funny that actually has that on there. Normally, the Trail 70s don't have that on there. That's a 10 millimeter. Just take your impact or your socket wrench and loosen it. Looks like someone has siliconed it a little bit. Let me get some light on here again. There we go. And then you can push this cover off. Doing. Popped right off. All right, well, let's get these bolts off here. These are nine millimeter bolts. Well, this is pretty much a piece of cake. I've been doing these since I was eight and a half, nine years old. I've been obsessed with Trail 70s forever. Love these things. I learned how to fix these because my grandfather, years ago, bought me one at a garage sale for 10 bucks. Brought it home, didn't run. He goes, you want to get this thing running? You don't learn how to work on it. So he guided me, but he let me do the work. And had to figure out, this time machine was the first thing I had to figure out because all that stuff was off. And he let me figure it out. And it was pretty cool. And I learned from ever since then. Thank you to my grandfather. <clears throat> I've been doing this ever since. Been obsessed with them. They kept bringing them home. <laughs> so, we got this off now. All you got to do is... I just take a pair of needle nose. Kind of grab a little bit. Get that chain off. Right from the top. There we go. And there's your chain. Your gear, not chain. And there's the... There is the, the zero... On that sprocket you'll let your chain kind of hang loose in there now we're gonna take the head off next I want to show you you're gonna have to remove this bolt and the four bolts on the head one two three four including this bolt so let me uh, let me get these loose <clears throat> the best way to do these heads bolts to get them loose I wouldn't right quite go nuts on unbolting them all at once. Do it like you're taking off a rim of a car. Go here, 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 and here. I mean, you don't have to, but that's just what I do. Just to make an, an even removal. This one, this one, that one, and that one. Go in an X pattern. Same way when you put it back on is what these go back on as. So let me get these off. And this bolt here, which has a Phillips head, most of them. Of course, I turned the light off and you can't see. Okay, see, it's got a Phillips. So you can loosen this with the, the wrench. And then you could get it out with the rest of the way with the Phillips without having to go nuts on it. Okay, so let's get these bolts off. I have this bolt out, and I have these two bolts here loose. So, now, oh yeah, I'm gonna restrict, remove that bolt. Now this might be sticky to come off. You don't wanna be hammering on it, but if you're gonna use something, don't use a hammer. Don't be hitting here or here with a hammer. Use a mallet if you have to. Rubber mallet would probably work the best. Now, on the front, I didn't take this. I took the bolts out, but I didn't take this little cover off. You don't have to. To save the gasket, I left, I'll leave it on. Unless I have to take the head apart, you know, the internals out of the head. 
I leave that cover on. So I come off pretty easy. Now, in a lot of cases too, you might have to take off the front fender. Fortunately, this bike, the stop had broke off on it up at the top. So the wheel turns quite a ways. So the fender's out of my way. I should be able to get this head off without a problem. So let's get this bugger loose. Sometimes a little sticky. There we go. Now see that just come off automatically. But the gasket's still on there, so it's good. So this has been off before. Now what it is, is the customer's complaining that um, they bought a Chinese head for it. And this is the original head. And the original heads have a nice dome inside them. I will show you here in just a second. So let's get this off. Okay, and there's the head. You can see a lot of carbon in there. It said it's not running very well, low on power. But this is very domed. Now, this is a stock Trail 70 head. And it ain't working with that cylinder because it's too much of a deep uh, insert. So let me show you the difference between a Chinese one and a Honda Trail 70. In fact, looking at it, it's got a nice brand new gasket and all, but it's at top dead center. And look at that. It's, the piston's way up in there. It's still got a little lip. Let me just get a zoom in on that. There we go. Yeah, see how that, there's a little lip there. Now, here's the original. This is what a Trail 70. I'm going to have to clean this one up because I'm going to use this one here. Look at the difference on that piston. It's domed. And it has a spot for the exhaust and intake. So that is the original Trail 70 uh, piston and rings and cylinder. Um, I'm going to mic that cylinder. That cylinder should be fine. But I'm going to double check everything here. I want to make sure it's right. Since this is the all, all the original, I might just use this whole thing because it's already broken in with these rings. This engine didn't smoke. It ran really well. Of course, that ring doesn't look so hot. Hmm. Hmm. We'll check it out. Okay, can you tell the difference between the, the two heads? I'll give you a second. Now, see, this is the Chinese head. See this lip around here? And then see the, the original one. It's much bigger. The valve is bigger. Let me get a little close up there. There's quite a difference. You know, I could go with... Uh, the Chinese head, but I like using original equipment. So we're just going to stay with the Trail 70 head. And I know this head was rebuilt, so we're going to clean this up. We're going to clean up this piston and change this all out. We're going to go with the original. Now we're going to take the jug off. What I like to do is I start with this bolt here, 10 millimeter. This uh, is your, like an idler pulley inside here. So, loosen a little like that. Get yourself a screwdriver or some pointy object. And I like to just pluck it out, just like that. I should take care of that. Now, the next bolt I'm going to take off would well, be this one here. Well, of course, the 10 millimeter has just disappeared on me again. Wow. That's unbelievable. It runs and hide. Well, let me get the third wrench out. <laughs> Hang on. Wrench number three. The elusive 
10 millimeter running away tools. All right, so I have that loose. Now it does have a Phillips head on it. So I'm just gonna take my little handy ink pad here. Make it a little quicker. Pull that baby out. Now, I'm gonna put this at top dead center. So I'm gonna hold the chain out so it doesn't bind. Bring it up to top dead center. Bring out your little hitting tool. Of course, on these all, if you ever have never had it apart before, the gasket on the back is definitely going to stick. And it's going to peel and break. So you're definitely going to want to get yourself a gasket kit. Because if it's never been off before, it's going to stick and rip. And you're going to want to replace that. For sure. Alright. I do believe it's loose. Yep. Hey, look at that. It actually ripped on that one. And that was a new gasket. They probably used a little bit of silicone. Okay, well, let's get a gasket kit for this. All right, and then that's the jug with a ripped gasket everywhere. <laughs> All right, and don't forget there is an O-ring here. With the bottom one, the O ring goes in down here. Now, we're gonna take that piston. Boy, what a funky looking piston! Wow, that's all I got to say. Look at the difference. Let's uh, get a little bit better angle here for you. Yeah, that's a big difference in that piston. Yeah, I cleaned this one up. So this one should be just fine. Now there's a retainer ring in here. Let me get a little zoom here. I got these rubber gloves on, so it's hard to get this camera to zoom in. Dude, no way. Oh, look at that. It worked. All right, yeah, get it so you have a nice little angle there. Of course, you're gonna get my hands in a way and everything else. So we're gonna find that little retainer ring. Give this a little twist. And there it is. Now, I'll go I can push it out from the other side. Let me get a screwdriver. Yeah, I put tools away last night. Well, that could be what happened to the 10 millimeter. Uh, probably because I actually did what I'm supposed to do. Put tools away. I need that little push out there. Now, there's a retainer ring on that side as well. But you don't have to remove that one. Okay. And there it is. Now, I'm going to wipe my gloves off here for a second. Grab the camera. I think I can lose the light now. Definitely a big difference there. In the height. I can't believe they're actually working. Wow. This aftermarket stuff, I don't like it. We're going with the OEM. Well, I'm going to 
probably clean up that gasket off there, put the new gasket on. Make sure I get this O-ring in. Now let's get this thing back together. All right, now what we're gonna do is put the piston on. Now, there is a little arrow here. If you ever wonder what that meant, that is pointing toward the exhaust side. That's your intake. You notice how that's bigger and that's smaller? That's for your exhaust and that is for your intake. And the arrow is pointed down. That's on these Honda ART, A-R-T, -A 087. And I don't have my glasses on. You know, you're getting old when you got to say, I need to wear my glasses. So, well, this side has the retainer ring on it. This side don't. Nope. This side has the retainer ring. This side don't. This is the original pin for this uh, piston. So I'm going to go right there. Make sure that is up. We'll put that little bugger right there. I'm kind of doing this feeling action here. Gotta look through the hole. And I pushed it in with my finger. What do you know? There we go. All right. Trying to line this bugger up. There we go. And we got that thing in. And then it's time to put the retainer ring in. Let me clean this up a bit. Put it in on the other side. So let me get that on and I'll return it to that. All right, now that we have that hooked up, or we got the retainer ring in on the other side. I like to rotate these rings, the opening of the rings. One on one side. This one over here. Opposite of the other ring, the top ring. And then your oil ring pointed downward. That's just the way I've done it. That way they're not uh, evened up. Now, I guess Honda sells a tool that you can use to slide over this so the cylinder slides right on really easily. I never had a problem. Especially you backyard mechanics like me. You don't have that tool and you can't afford it. So you're going to do it the best way you can. Just be careful when you're doing it that you don't catch the ring on the cylinder head. So we're going to put this cylinder head back on. Oh, before I forget, don't forget to put your O-ring on. I can't pick it up because it's slippery, like a wet worm. Like a little tiny wormy. Don't forget to put this in. Just like that. Now, I am going to use this original gasket because I don't have one right now. Normally, I would replace it if I had one, but most of you guys don't want to have one either. I just put a tiny bit of silicone on the edges where it came off. Yes, I'm a backyard mechanic. That's the cheater way out, but I'm cheating my way out. It should not leak. I've never really had a problem with it leaking. So, you want to be very careful when putting these in can be a little fight here. All right, those two are in. The one that's gonna be the toughest is your uh, oil ring. It's very fragile. So when you get that one in there, work your way in just a little bit, make sure it ain't catching anywhere, even on all sides, and there you go. Whew, toughest part is over. Now, 
what you're going to want to get yourself if you have it if you don't you can make yourself one I uh, see if I can find mine no oh, I kind of oh that tip's broken on this one okay so you're gonna have yourself like a hook ring or a hook style take a coat hanger and do this as well get that on there Grab the chain. Don't grab your finger like I'm doing. You just pull your way through. Just like that. And then get your cylinder to go back in. Now the pins, you know, I forgot to mention about the pins. There are pins in the head guide pins like on the outside here there's one here there should be one down here but there isn't one missing on the inside i'm going to show you on this head for example head cylinder guys i'm sorry if i keep calling these the wrong name for the jug cheesy wheezy um that's your guide pin now, this should have two guide pins on it, which it did. And it'll guide you to the block, keep it from uh, cocking sideways. It kind of keeps it a nice alignment. All right, so. Bring this back out a bit. There we go. Now, at this point, use your uh, Phillips style head bolt screw whatever it could be called i'm not really sure call it what you want i call it a bolt a screw's got well you know what you don't know this could be a a combination bolt screw bolt screw because it's got a screw head and a bolt so anyhow just give that a little snug there. I'm not going to go nuts all on it. Just for now. Just to hold it against the body of it. And I'm going to pull this chain out nice and snug. Make sure it's on the T mark. Just for giggles here. Now I'm going to show you <laughs> what a difference we have Pull this off here. Look at the difference on that piston how it sticks out the dome. That's perfect. Of course, the head gasket is on there, and that's why you see a little lip there, but that's for the head gasket. What a difference. Wow. Oh boy, this thing's gonna run good. All right, now. Let's put this back in. Now, after you get cleaned up your parts a little bit, make sure there's no grime, no grease, no dirt. Well, the grease don't matter. Only thing you got to worry about is, oh, look, there's a mosquito. Nice. I can tell it's getting late. And I got all the doors open. It's a nice night. Oh, little tiny gasket there. You put your guide wheel back in and yeah, see I just kind of do this feely wise get it to go in there and there it is there you can see that spinning give that a little bit of a snug all right now as you for your head gasket before I get ahead of myself here, the head gasket's on. You have an O-ring in here. So you make sure that O-ring is there. There's a small O-ring over here as well. Don't forget those because that will leak if you don't. So you might get lucky and it might not leak. But not sure. I'm just going to make sure it's in there. Now, let's put 
the head on. <laughs> Let's put the jug on. On top of the jug. Now, gotta put on the head. All right, let's work on that. On the flywheel, you have an F and you have a T. The F is for your points, filament. T is for your timing, for your timing chain. On the engine, there's a slot grooved at the top. Back off here for you. The top of the motor, there's a slot. Now, most of the flywheels will have them marked at the top as well. This one's kind of scraped. But you got your F mark and your T mark. You want to put the T, for timing, right in between there, just like that. And also say that on the front. Right here is a groove on the front of the head. So that is your other timing mark. And what you're going to have is that zero pointing right to it. So if you have this in here, you're going to want to have this <clears throat> lined up right there. It's not going to be perfect. It's going to be off just a hair like that, if you see it. Focus in a little bit on there. It's going to be off a of hair because the timing chain's worn. But it, out of all these years I've worked on these Trail 70s, never had a problem. Always seem to run really well. So that is your front timing mark. When I put before I put the head on, I want to make sure this is at top dead center. Your T mark is at the mark up top. You take your little timing gear and eyeball it to where you can see that. I can't even see. Get that to be pointing right toward the front, just like that. And that's what I like to do. Let's get it like that toward your front. It just makes it easier when you go to put this ch timer chain on. Now, let's uh, put the head on. I did a little cleaning on the head. I wanted to make sure this is smooth and no uh, nicks or marks. Now, sometimes, let me give you a little uh, suggestion. Sometimes, when you're messing around with the head, and you go to put it on, sometimes it's like, oh, it stops halfway. Why is it stopping halfway? Well, these slide pins that hold these will sometimes move on you, and they'll move into the hole area. And it'll stop you from putting this head all the way through the bolts, come or the studs that come all the way through. If that's a problem, if that happens, all you got to do is either get it to fall back down or use something small and just push it over. Just a little trick I found out, if that does happen to you. Thinking, why does it stop halfway? All right, now. There's the steering wheel right here. And that's, do this. Through. Just work your way through, guys. Just like that. Guide pins. You see, there's a missing guide pin. You know, I'm going to have to take this back off. I want to put a guide pin on there, guys, because I don't like... Because if you tighten this up and it tightens up, it won't tighten up evenly. Now, that's what happens when you don't have a guide pin. Let me zoom in on that. I'm going to show you. All right. See that guy pin missing? How that head moves? Not good. So I'm going to pull this back off. That's because I got the spark plug still in there. See, there's a guy pin up here. Well, sorry. 
the guide pin's up here. But the one, so your guide pin goes in this hole, and one down in this hole. This one here is missing. And this one here. So, I'm going to have to find myself, oh, I think I got myself a guide pin here. Yep, I do. Just got to get it out. There it is. There's your guide pin right there. Let's slide that on. Yeah, let me get a little closer so you can see. I'm going to have to handheld this one. Sorry about the wiggle camera, guys. Just get that the pin to go right in there. And there it is. Got one up here. One right there. Now, I'm going to put this head back on. Just like we were doing it. Alright, so what I did is I slid the head back on. Got to go into guide pins. I like to take a screwdriver and just stick it in to hold the timing gear for now. And as you can see, now the head is tight. Not super tight, but I mean, it doesn't wiggle around with the guide pin in it, which was missing. Which is not good. All right, so I'm looking for the other uh, screw bolt. I guess that's what we're going to call it, screw bolt. Of course, I just used the Phillips for... Change it out. We'll put a fill, uh, straight head in there. Now, tighten it back up. Just snug it. And by the way, I, I think at the beginning of the video, I said 10 foot-pounds. I was wrong. It's not 10 foot-pounds. I thought about it. I go, wait a minute. What am I saying 10 foot-pounds? It's 10 inch-pounds. Uh, if I remember correctly, it's been a while, but I do believe it was 10 inch pounds for each one of these bolts, not foot. That's a lot. All right. Now what we're going to do, I'm going to put this back on. Same thing with this. You see the arrow on here? Well, let me get a zoom in. I bet a lot of people don't know that, but there's an arrow on there. That means down for the, the top of the head. Arrow pointed down. Let me put that bugger back on. I don't think it hurts either way, but for some reason, that's the way they have it. Now, you do have a brass washer, which goes over here. And you have just a regular nut. It goes on. I do believe this is not, that wasn't right. So the brass, the brass looking washer goes on this side. The nut on the far left bottom. And you put your other washers on. You don't want to forget these washers because if you do have these style nuts, it'll break the top right off them. Cap nuts, like a derby, like a derby. Yeah, it's a nut wearing a derby. <laughs> That's it. Hey, I just made a new uh, thing. Derby cap. All right. Get those started there. All washers are on. Now, I don't suggest using an impact on that. Like I said, you want to go in a cross pattern. I'm going to just snug these these uh, little things up here, these derby caps. Let me snug these up. And we'll show you what we're going to do next here. 
All right, so I've always kind of done this by feel. I know it's 10 inch pounds meter, but I don't have one. I know you guys don't have one. So I'll start from down here and I feel it get nice and snug, just like that. I'll do the same with this one. And that's nice and snug. I'll go up here, do the same thing. That's nice and snug. I want an equal pressure. Yeah, see that one has to go just a little more. Yep, right there. Now I can feel it. Equal pressure. So you go from here, here. Just double checking it. Made a little click sound. Look at that. Just like you're torquing it. That was pretty cool. All right. So that's done. Then you want to give these a little bit of a nice snug, not super tight because you can over torque this. Just nice snug, don't have to be crazy because these just guide you so they don't come loose, vibration. All right, the head and the jug is on now. In fact, there's a little bit of silicone coming out of there. I'm gonna wipe that off, make it look nice. So it doesn't look like a backyard mechanic did it like me. A little hack. All right. Now I'm going to lower the camera. Let's get these uh, screws back in for the timing chain. All right. Now I set this up in there and it kind of clicked into place. I'm going to move this out of the way. Now I want to check my timing. Okay, right on the T mark. Now see that is above the line. The closest one is usually going to be at the bottom. So let me zoom in for you. <clears throat> there we go. Hard to do with rubber gloves on, guys. Now I'll get the better light here. There we go. I should mark that. Let me give you a mark. All right, so we're gonna mark where that line is at, right there. So you can see, and there's the circle. See how it's off? Oh, 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 oh. So it should be kind of like this, but the time of chain is stretched throughout the years. But I've never had a problem with it running. I set it so the mark is at the bottom of the line, not the top. You can play with it and see which one's better. But in fact, you know what? Just for the fun of it, I think I'm going to try it this time. Lord have mercy. Right there at the T mark. So, and then the closest line. Yeah, it could be either or. We're going to try right there. I can always change it. We'll see how it runs at that point. But let's get these screws back in. I'm going to realign it. Right there. Nine millimeter, guys, is what that is. And when you want to torque these, I'm sure it's probably 10 foot pounds. If you want to look up the specs, go right ahead. Me, I just give it a quick little zap with my uh, zap gun here. My uh, electric zap ray gun. Give it a slow. There we go. That's it. If you ever break one of those off in there, it's a pain in the butt to get off. Trust me, I've done it. Gasket looks good. I know, still don't know why they use silicone on that. Hmm. So, I'm going to kind of make sure there's silicone 
you don't want to have too much silicone to get into your motor because then it'll clog up your fuel filter, oil filter. Definitely don't want to do that. So make sure you get all that old junk off there. Oh, yeah, well, here I'm, not, I'm moving right along here. The shorter, the smaller pin, oh, let me zoom out. This here, there is a groove on this side where this fits into the hole. You'll see it. The bigger side is just the guide that keeps this from moving out. So you want to make sure the small side just goes over here in between there. Pretty much lined up with that bolt. So you get that in there. Checking myself. Now, got to find that. Uh, now, when you go to put your uh, long rod in there, bolt, long bolt, make sure you have the washer that's on there that kind of looks like a brass washer. It slides on there. You got to have that on there, else it will leak oil too. Put that back on the other side, through that hole, and then tighten her up. And uh, tighten this up, and we'll get it all back together now. I'll throw the carburetor back on. Uh, we'll leave this cover off for now, and uh, we'll show you how it runs. We're gonna get the exhaust back on. Of course, you see that all coming off. I'm sure you don't want to watch all that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we got this puppy back together. Of course, I'll let this cover off for now. Uh, time machine cover, but I got the carburetor back on and uh, exhaust, bolt it back up. So, in theory, it should start right up. I just turn the gas on to let it fill up. And uh, I'm gonna give it a hand crank and see how this thing goes. So let's give this a shot. No, oh. <laughs> that would help. <laughs> Always remember, turn on the key. The key would be a good thing to do. Maybe if you want to hear it run. a little bit of a carburetor adjustment now. Sounded pretty good. No smoke. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. No leaks. Turn the gas back off. I like it. And there you go, guys. 1970 Honda Trail 70. All ready to go. Give it back to the guy, he's going to be happy because he's been fighting this poor thing for over a year. So, I told him, I'd take care of it. So anyway, if you guys like this, please like and subscribe. And, uh, thanks for coming and watching me do this. So, anyway, rock on guys. You guys take care. Have yourself a great day. We'll see you soon.